Hey there, Interwebs. Earlier this week, I facetiously uploaded a video making the erroneous claim that the sum of an infinite string of ones is equal to zero. That is not true, and I knew that at the time. It was a joke. The actual value of the sum of an infinite string of ones is... Negative one half. Ha! Zero's not looking so dumb now, is it? Now, I can hear you shouting, how can this be? So I'll prove it to you, and just because I'm a nice guy, I won't use Riemann sums. Let's start with the infinite series 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1, etc. The sum of that series is equal to one half, and that kind of makes sense. This is called Grandi's series, and to learn more about how it works, click the screen now for a lovely video by the wonderful team at number file. Call 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1, etc. S, and 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, etc. Z. To make S equal to Z, what would we have to do? We would need to add 0 plus 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 0 plus 2, etc. Now, anyone with a PhD in applied zoology or just a first grade education knows that 0 plus 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 0 plus 2, etc. is equal to 2 plus 2 plus 2, etc. And this is just 2 times the quantity 1 plus 1 plus 1, etc., which is z. Now we have s plus 2z is equal to z. If we subtract z from both sides of the equation, we have s plus z equals 0, and we know that s is equal to 1 half. This means that z has to be equal to negative 1 half. This is the kind of result that breaks my brain a little. I graduated high school, I passed multivariable calculus, and I use differential equations on a daily basis. I know that to go from negative 1 half to 1 half, I just need to add 1, but 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, etc. is equal to negative 1 half. Adding 1 to that should literally be an infinitely small change, giving me 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, etc., instead of 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, etc. There's no difference. What's more, z is negative, despite being entirely positive sums, and yet if I add another positive number that somehow makes it equal to s, half of whose constituent values are negative? This makes no sense. Or does it? We're used to thinking of numbers like this, a line. But what if we thought of them more like this, a circle? If our number line were actually circular, infinite sums would begin to loop back around before the beginning point zero, giving us negative numbers. S is positive because it oscillates, never picking up much value, but z doesn't have negative sums to keep it low. It's free to loop all the way around to the small negatives. Once again, I can hear you shouting at your screens, how can the number line be a circle? It has to go out to infinity. Well, if you can have an infinitely long line, why can't you bend it around into a circle? The circle has an infinite circumference. Now, because the circle is so large, any finite section of its perimeter you look at, no matter how large it will look like a straight line of zero curvature. This is because the larger a circle gets, the less curved an arc of constant chord length will be. Let's talk geometry with numbers. The straight line has a degree of curvature equal to zero. If we substitute that for d sub c, no matter what chord length we choose, it results in the radius approaching infinity. 2 pi times infinity gives us the infinite circumference, and suddenly this theory doesn't sound so crazy. So let's go back to our sum s equals 1 half. If we merely subtract 1, we've moved to negative 1 half, which we know is the sum of an infinite string of 1s, and that, dear viewer, is how we count past infinity. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day.